Oh my god! This is, makes for a really great afternoon, I gotta say. If you do have the chance, do find yourself a 599 and go for a drive. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Happy days. Happy days. You know, there's one thing I couldn't help but notice getting into this 2009 Ferrari 599 GTB Fiorano, thanks to my friend uh, Pat over here at uh, Humberview Motorsports. I gotta say, the first thing I noticed right away, it smells like my old M5. It smells like an old BMW in here. And I mean that in a great way. And being a 2009 and having flappy paddles. It's one of those things that, well, I remember. I remember this setup, this transmission. This transmission that I know, I know from the BMW side of things, which was referred to as the SMG transmission. Sequential manual gearbox. And it kind of sounds like I'm rowing through gears, but I'm not rowing through gears. This is an older version of what a double clutch system used to be. But I don't want to get too much into all those little details. I just enjoy driving and listening to this car. So what is it? Well, it's a Ferrari, so everyone wants to know what that is, but a little bit of history with Ferrari. Ferrari, if you've ever noticed the big emblem on the side of the car, it says Scuderia Ferrari, or Scuderia Ferrari if you're Italian, and that little nomenclature, the SF, refers to Scuderia. Scuderia means stable in Italian, and a Scuderia, or a stable, is exactly what you think it is. It's actually a horse stable, not as in stability. Now, why call the car company Scuderia Ferrari? Well, before you raced cars, what were you racing? You were racing horses, and you probably had a stable of horses to race. Well, that's what a Ferrari is, hence the prancing horse symbol. It's a car that, much like many others, is part of a racing stable of vehicles, and that stable is known as Scuderia Ferrari, and that's where you get the name, Scuderia Ferrari. Now, the 599 GTB Fiorano, well, there's a little bit going on there, and like a lot of Ferraris, the name or the nomenclature of the 599 actually represents the uh, size of the engine. So the engine in this car is actually a V12, and it's in the front on this car. This is actually a pretty classic Ferrari. Big V12 at the front, rear wheel drive, known as a uh, GTB, or Grand Touring Berlinetta, and a Berlinetta is a nice way of saying a small saloon car. Now, sometimes Berlinettas can have two extra tiny seats at the back. This car doesn't, this just has a parcel shelf. And quite frankly, like many things in this car, you're really not that interested in taking more people. You really have no interest in the radio, for instance. You really just want to drive this car and listen to it, and a glorious sound it is. I mean, really, even just sitting at a light, putting the car in neutral and revving the engine is just something that I probably would end up doing sitting in my garage. But more to the point, the 599, 5,999 cc's, or almost six liters, gives you the name 599. GT is much like any other car, it's a grand touring car, Mustang GT. Grand touring means a long trip. Berlinetta meaning small saloon car. So all that put together gives you that mouthful of Ferrari 599 GTB Fiorano. So what does Fiorano mean? Well, Fiorano is the uh, test track at Ferrari. If the F1 guys are practicing, they are practicing on the Ferrari test track, which is known as Fiorano. So, is this car track capable? Very much so, very track capable. It's got carbon ceramic brakes. It even has carbon seats. The seats are just lovely in this car and they just, they hug me and I, I, I just, well, it's a whole tour de force. Everything in this car is doing something. There's not a lot of extra fat. I think it's kind of funny we have a radio because I have no interest in turning it on. The air conditioning's nice and cold and I got some roadway in front of me and it makes for a pretty nice environment to be in here, I gotta say. And I'm so thankful to the to Pat over at Humberview Motorsports and thank you again, Pat, for letting me uh, show off uh, this car to the folks out there. And if you've never checked out the Humberview Motorsports website, 
you just kind of like cars and like to see what they are and maybe what the prices are and dream on or have a goal set in mind, you really got to check out the Humberview Motorsport website. It's fantastic. It's like a candy store. That I could probably stay here all day for the next several days doing Tuesday test drive videos on fantastic cars like this one. But wow, I mean, hey, check it out. Pretty fantastic stuff. So what more about the 590? Well, you're talking over 600 horsepower on a 6 liter V12. So no turbocharging necessary in this car. This car is definitely one of those cars that you can uh, get in, drive quickly, and well, you could get yourself into some trouble with this car for sure, but uh, I definitely would say there's enough electronics in it to kind of keep you honest, we'll say. This car also has a uh, Manatino, which on the steering wheel gives you an engine start feature. It looks kind of cool, but a little switch. And this switch is reminiscent of the Formula One cars that have a lot of dip switches and other dials and whatnot that are on, on, the, uh, on the steering wheel. Well, this car is very much the same. You get to set it up. Right now, I have it in sport mode. You can put it into a wet weather mode, which with a 600 horsepower rear wheel drive car, you probably will actually use. It even has a snow mode. Now, whether you're gonna put some skis in uh, the back of the car, uh, chances are that's not gonna happen, but hey, it's good that it's there. Um, one of the other things about the car that unfortunately I won't be able to test is of course the race setting. Uh, the race setting's probably a little bit much for what we need to do around the city streets here in Toronto, but for now it's definitely, uh, definitely an exhilarating experience no matter what. The flappy paddles are very quick, obviously, um, and when you downshift, you get that nice sound. right as we come to a stop and needless to say as I come to a stop at this light uh, there's a few people looking at me right now because hey this is a gorgeous car front engine rear design it just looks like a bullet flying through the air and uh, it kind of feels like one too I gotta say but uh, definitely a car worth checking out that is for sure on the interior there's tons of carbon fiber carbon fiber to express that Formula One heritage uh, is it really doing much to make the car a little bit lighter weight? Not really. This is a 2009, and so this car has a feel of, it reminds me of my E39 M5, and for those of you out there who know what I'm referring to, it's a BMW M5 from almost 20 years ago now, and this car, being a 2009, really came out, I believe it was 06 or 07, and it was the car that came after the 575 Marinello, uh, and what came after it was the F12 Berlinetta, yet another small saloon car. And I gotta say, I love these. I'm a, I'm a little bit tall in stature, so some of the pinup Ferraris that I remember when I was a kid, I really have a hard time driving them. I've tried driving them, and I am just a little bit too big for a 348. Uh, even a 512, uh, it was surprisingly small for me. This is completely different. This feels like my own personal vehicle, which is a Corvette Stingray. Now, I feel like a Corvette Stingray is a bit of a stretch, I know, but uh, I just mean an overall feel and, and um, seating position. The seating position on the car is wonderful. And driving it, whether you're gonna flip the paddles and shift or not, the paddles aren't gonna move. They're gonna stay permanent behind the wheel. And before you know it, you're very quickly up into the uh, higher gear sets. And I gotta say, using the paddle shifters is, it's kind of fun because it, there is a little bit more of a lag it, because this is a manual gearbox beneath this car, well actually at the back because it's a transaxle, the transmission isn't at the front, the transmission on this car is at the back, but the transaxle in this car is actually being actuated by uh, small hydraulic motors that actually flip the gears for you. So when you go to gear up or gear down, it's not exactly as instantaneous of, as a double clutch transmission, which we're all uh, kind of a lot more used to now, thanks to a lot of the German manufacturers. And there is no feeling of a shift whatsoever. In this car, the feeling of a shift is actually almost like you're shifting it yourself, but rather quickly. I can see why the car definitely has uh, ceramic brakes as well, because ceramic brakes, they don't really work until they get really hot. And so my initial stop in the car just a few blocks away was a bit of a surprise. The car wasn't slowing as quickly as I'd like it to. But once the uh, carbon ceramics get hot, this car gets hot. Uh, the downside is I gotta give this car back eventually, which kind of blows, but whatever. At any rate, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. All the carbon fiber, all the interior pieces, for a car that's a 2009, and we're here in 2020, 11 years, the car doesn't feel or look 11 years old. The look of the car still seems very much up to date. The interior might be a little bit dated at a first glance, but 
I don't know, I, I like the travel and distance. It's a little bit pixelated. It's not the same clarity that you're getting on a, on a new car today, but wow, the overall feeling is just, eh, it's a Ferrari. It, it sounds amazing. It, pretty easy to have some fun in this car. I mean, I gotta say, the person who actually buys this vehicle, I gotta hand it to them because I think this is a, I think this is one of those cars that, for the dollar, the bang for the buck, is pretty phenomenal. Um, not to mention, just look at the car. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, I just love it. But then again, I mean, as an Italian kid growing up, you kind of, you kind of always love Ferraris anyway. I think it's in the blood. All right. So we're at a light here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in sport mode. Uh, I'm going to flick it now from sport to race mode and see how it sounds. Nothing too crazy here because, again, we're on city streets. Unfortunately, we're not on a track. Immediately, the car just absolutely wants to go. I can tell right away that I'm in race mode. It sounds like I'm going really, really fast, but I'm not, I swear, I'm actually within the road limit. This is not a car to sit in and have a, a long conversation. This is definitely a car to be screaming. And by the way, the rev limit here is just a little after 8,000 RPM. This is the sound at four and a half. So I'm only halfway up uh, the, uh, the rev counter on this car and it sounds amazing. Oh my God. I mean, I should also say as well, there's a bit of a visceral feeling in the car. Like you can feel it through the seats. You can hear that engine climb and, and rev and it kind of vibrates. It really is really phenomenal. Ah, magnifico, meravigliosa. This is, uh, this is definitely something that I could get used to driving daily. And uh, I actually would probably stop making coffee at home and just go out and get some, why not? As far as the other por portions of the interior, like the, uh, um, uh, center portion here where you normally would see a gearbox or a shifter you really just only have four buttons and that's about it along with your hazards um, everything else on the car is purpose-built every vent on the hood on the side of the car does something if it's not venting brakes it's adding some air to the engine which is very thirsty for uh, uh, for plenty of volume <laughs> that is for sure it's a v12 it's six liters and it'll hit 8,000 rpm so definitely will ask for plenty of air if it can and it will and uh, yeah, even the rear fairing on the car, uh, the, the rear fairing that allows the air to climb under the car, go under the car nice and smooth and get the car a lot of downforce. You can see it, even the rear pillar, the, the rear C pillar on the car uh, has um, a big um, kind of a swoop that comes down the rear quarter panel. And that's actually to direct air. It actually has a purpose. It's not strictly designed. Really phenomenal stuff. And, and uh, again, this is a decades old vehicle, but it doesn't feel like it. Oh, wow. Oh.